think the pandemic, to be honest, has put us in a little bit of a different place this last year. I think a lot of people, even though day-to-day -day business is continuing and, uh, and in, in some ways working life is normal, um, despite the working from home, I think there is a sense of sort of overall survival kind of taking priority over, you know, big blue sky kind of projects. But before that, definitely... I think um, we've made a lot of progress on the different areas. Um, it is a journey, so it feels like it's sort of never, never complete. Um, but one thing that we've really had fun doing is the compliance videos that we've made in-house. We found that there was quite a bit of fatigue in the organisation um, around kind of off-the-shelf trainings and very separate videos and so forth. So we decided to set ourselves a challenge of kind of delivering a really... Um, you know, really basic compliance message um, to our colleagues in one minute. And we decided to do it on a low budget. So we filmed the videos just using an iPhone. Um, I think we didn't even have a microphone in the first, uh, the first series, but we made a series of videos called Stephen Says, starring a member of the, of the legal team of that name. Completely low budget and, uh, you know, slightly embarrassing, but they were an absolute hit um, and we got a lot of views. I think nearly everyone watched the videos and we actually had people asking us for more compliance videos, which I think is a kind of rare, uh, a rare event to experience. Um, so it's been really super fun. Uh, we scripted them, filmed them ourselves. Um, we got a freelancer to just edit them for, for a very low cost and uh, they were super fun to make and I think they've had way more impact than, than the expensive kind of uh, corporate videos and, and e that one typically needs to do in a, in a big organisation. So it's a bit of a funny story how I, how I ended up here and, and I guess part of the journey that's, that's made me the lawyer I am today. I actually was recruited by Alan and Overy uh, from Australia to, uh, to join their international M&A practice in Amsterdam. I signed my contract the day that Lemon Brothers collapsed. Um, so it was a bit of a nervy time, but I arrived in Amsterdam and I still had a job. That was great. But I got there and there was no international M&A work to do. The crisis had just hit. Um, a lot of lawyers were losing their jobs. Um, there were certainly no big international deals to do. So I ended up doing Dutch private equity work um, and, and other Dutch sort of joint ventures in emerging markets and so forth, quite, quite exotic stuff. I didn't know anything about Dutch law. I didn't speak the language. Um, I'd only really spent a bit of time studying here and backpacking and that kind of thing. Um, so it forced me to actually <laughs> adopt the local culture. I learned the language, uh, invested a lot of time and energy um, becoming fluent in the language. I picked up Dutch law. I even studied Dutch law uh, alongside my job in Dutch. Um, and before I knew it, I was a common law lawyer uh, uh, coming from Australia and UK uh, UK qualified with quite a good civil law knowledge. So um, I turned into this kind of hybrid lawyer um, and those sort of skills are quite relevant to the job that I'm doing now. So um, at the time I was completely out of my comfort zone, um, you know, doing deals with a legal system that, that you don't know um, is quite scary for most lawyers. We like to stick our kind of domestic space quite often. And I've now got such a broader perspective uh, on the world, just having now seen two legal systems rather than, rather than just being a common lawyer. So, yeah, I recommend it to anyone if you get the chance, even though Dutch is probably not the most useful language outside the Netherlands. It's, uh, it's opened a lot of doors for me. Well, if I would follow my kind of natural musical tastes, it would probably be a Nick Cave number, uh, but that's, that's probably a bit moody and dark. Uh, so my theme song is Roll With It by Oasis. And I choose this song because uh, I think the pandemic has shown us that um, you really can't predict life. And there are a lot of twists and turns that you could never anticipate. So, 
you got to ride the wave. Um, don't try and fight it. Just go along for the ride and, uh, and do your best. But also, which I think is a message of this song, is stay true to yourself. You know, that's the only thing you can do is be you, stay close to your values, what's important to you, your purpose, roll with it, be yourself, and uh, that's the best thing you can do.